Hello everyone and thank you for joining me for this crochet produce bag video tutorial. You can find the instructions for this pattern on my website handyfinch.com. Today we're going to be using size 10 crochet cotton like this. Also looks like this. It's pretty lightweight, more like thread than, than yarn. Uh, this is what we're going to end up looking like down the road and I'll get back to this to this bag a little later. So let's see, we're also using a size G crochet hook. Um, G or F, they're both pretty small, they should work pretty well for you to do this bag. Alright, so to start off we make a magic ring, also called an adjustable ring. So you twist your <clears throat> twist your thread around your fingers like this. Make sure you've got it crossed at the top. Put your hook through the through the ring, and I just drop a little loop, and that gets me started. And a little chain to get going. Now we're gonna work six single crochets into this ring. So you put your loop through. Draw up a loop, yarn over and draw through again, that's one, same thing, two, three, four, five, And six. Now this is the magic part of the magic ring. So you just pull the tail nice and gently. And as you pull, the ring closes in and makes a nice a nice tight circle here of your single crochets. So let's just double check, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so we're gonna slip stitch into the first single crochet. And you wanna make sure you're slipping into the top of the single crochet and not the chain one that started off the round. Okay, there we go, and just slip, slip through. So that's the end of round one. Now we're going to start on round two. So just keep in mind, in this pattern, every time you do a double crochet, it's going to be immediately followed by a chain two. Um, to start round two, we're going to start with chaining five. In my original pattern, I just had chain four, but um, a chain three is typically used as a substitute for a double crochet. So the first three chains of the chain five, that's, that's going to count as a double crochet. So now we have to do another chain two. And then in this round, every single crochet is going to get two double crochets and chain twos. So into the same stitch here, we're going to work another double crochet. And chain two. <clears throat> now in the next single crochet we're going to do the same thing, a double crochet, and chain two, and then another double crochet. And chain two. Now we're going to work into the third single crochet, do the same thing, double crochet and chain two, and one more in that spot, double crochet and chain two. So now we're about halfway around our, our circle, we've got three more single crochets to go. Now we're in the fourth single crochet, we're going to do a double crochet and chain two 
and another double crochet and chain two onto the fifth double crochet <clears throat> and chain two and another double crochet and chain two one and two okay so now we're going into the last single crochet I'm gonna do the same thing double crochet chain two and last one for this round, double crochet and chain two. <clears throat> so we've made our little round and we're going to slip stitch into the chain five that we started with. Some people are a little bit more precise when they crochet and they would make sure that they got right into the third chain. I am kind of sloppy and I like to go fast so I'm just going to go right into the whole spot and just slip stitch to bring it together. So that's the end of round two. <clears throat> okay, so now we're going to start round three. Again, we're going to chain five. That's how we're going to start pretty much every round. Two, three, four, five. So that counts again as our double crochet and chain two. Now this is going to be a corner. So we're going to work another double crochet and chain two into the same space. And chain two. Now in the next two spaces, we're just going to work one double crochet and chain two. So here's our next space. Put your hook through, drop your loop, and double crochet and chain two and in the next space same thing just one double crochet and chain two okay let's see now the next space is going to be another corner space so we're going to work two double crochets and chain twos in the same space one and chain two and in the same space do the second one and chain two so that gives us our second corner now we're going to work down the next side which means in the next two spaces it's just going to be one double crochet in each one so that's one plus chain two and then another one in the next space plus chain two and we're back to the next corner so again it's going to be two double crochets plus chain two into the same chain two space of the previous round so one chain two and one more in the same space and chain two. Okay, so we're up to the next side again. So the next two spaces, each space is only going to get one double crochet. And chain two. Okay, so that's, that side's done. We're back to another corner, which is going to get two double crochets in the same, same chain two space. And chain two. So now we're on the last side. We're almost, almost back to the beginning and 
these two chain two spaces are each going to get one double crochet. So that's one and chain two and one in the next space as well and chain two and then again we're just going to slip stitch right into that chain five space that we started the round. Okay, so here's your little square. We've got one, two, three, four corners. And you can tell it's a corner space because it's the chain two space between two double crochets that are in the same space in the previous round. So you just need to keep track of these spaces and you will be good to go for the rest of the of the increasing rounds because we're going to do the same same pattern over and over again. In every corner space, this, that's the space between two double crochets in the same space, is also going to get two double crochets in the same space all the way around in every corner. And then along all the sides, each chain two space is just going to get one double crochet. So here we go. We're going to start round three again with chain five, which counts as a double crochet plus chain two. And then we're still in the corner here, so we're going to do another double crochet plus chain two. Okay, so now we're back to working along a side. We've got one, two, three, three chain two spaces that we're going to work into on this side. So we're going to do a double crochet. plus chain two, and then in the next space we're going to do a double crochet, plus chain two, and in the next space a double crochet, plus chain two. But now the next space you can see these two double crochets are in the same space, so that's how we know this is a corner space and we're going to do two double crochets and chain twos in that space. And chain two. Okay, so we're going to set this down so you can see. This is our first corner, and we went along the side, and we've gotten to the next corner. Now we're going to work along this side till we get to this corner, and just keep going around. So that's one, and then in the next space, double crochet, plus chain two, so we've done two on that side. Now we're going to do the third one on that side in the next space, and chain two, and we're back to the next corner, so we're going to do the corner, which is two double crochets and chain twos in the same space. So that's one, chain two, and here's two. Okay, so we've got three corners done. One, two, three. We're going to go this side, corner, and side. So that's one, and chain two. Next one, double crochet, and chain two. And the next space, double crochet, and chain two, and next is a corner space, so we're going to do one double crochet, and chain two, and then we're going to do a second one. And chain two. 
Okay, so we're on to the last side. Last one. And chain two. And then we're just going to slip stitch to get us back where we started. Alright, so here's the end of round three. We've got one, two, three, four corners. So again, we're just going to keep working the exact same way all the next rounds and it's going to get bigger and bigger and you're going to have a nice, a nice square here. And then on round seven, if you want to make, I mean, you can keep going forever and I've got a bag that I'll show you later where I just kept going and kept making a bigger and bigger square. Um, in the pattern for a good small bag, I do, uh, Round, up to round six is increasing, and then on round seven, um, we'll just pretend I've got more rounds here. You'll do your chain five, which is your three, four, five, double crochet and chain two, and then instead of doing that corner stitch here, you're just going to move right on to the next space. And then in the next corner, when you get to it, you aren't going to do a corner stitch anymore. You're going to treat it just like every other, every other space, and that's what's going to draw your bag up a little bit, and and give you sides instead of just growing straight out. So I'll show you here real quick, and then I'll rip it out so I can finish this bag later. Because I think this would hold about one apple if I were to finish it the rest of the way. Okay, so see here I've gotten to the corner stitch, but I'm going to stop increasing, so I'm just going to chain two and move on. Okay, so see I've stopped doing the corner stitches, now I've just done every space gets its own uh, double crochet and chain two. All right, so let's move on to the other bag that I had started because I want to show you how to do a foundation single crochet so that you can add some handles. And we'll talk about this bag a little bit first. So I did actually up to round seven increasing. Let's find my corners here. They're in here somewhere. Ah, okay. And then on round eight is when I stopped increasing. So it's a little hard to see, but um, yeah, here's the corners. And okay, so my camera decided it just wanted to die. Um, I'm not sure what that was about, so we'll start back here with, we'll say, part two of this crochet produce bag tutorial. And we are looking here at a bag that I already worked up the other day so that you wouldn't have to watch me crochet a whole bag because that would take forever. So this bag is a little bit bigger than the ones I have in the pattern. I did one more increasing row uh, than the pattern calls for, so it's four stitches bigger than than the bag the pattern calls for, which is, um, I don't know, two or three inches bigger, which is pretty substantial because these things stretch, and I'll show you that later. So here I have marked out um, we're going to put some handles on this bag. So I made sure everything was even and marked out where the handle handles are going to start and stop. 
And to make the handles, I'm going to show you a fun stitch that I learned on another, on another blog called a foundation single crochet. And it makes it a whole lot easier than just chaining um, a whole bunch. It, it turns out nicer, and I think it's a little bit of a stronger stitch. So, all right, here we go. Um, working on the, the handles. So, also, you could make this a little longer, a couple rows shorter. I think I ended up at about 15. Um, it just looked right this long. So, okay, and I've just marked, I'll take these little pink strings out later. I just marked where I'm going to start my foundation single crochets. So, We're going to start off the same as we did in the previous rounds with a chain five, two, three, four, five, and that counts as a foundation single crochet, or sorry, a double crochet and chain two, getting a little bit ahead of myself. And then again, in the next space, we're going to do a double crochet and chain two, and we're going to do that until we get to that marked stitch. Okay, so I just did my double crochet, and this is the first time we're not going to immediately do a chain two after we do a double crochet. So there's my marked stitch. So I'm going to skip from this space to this space, and that's where I'm going to build my handles. So let's see. We're going to do the foundation single crochet, insert our hook into right here of our double crochet we're going to draw a loop through and then we're going to just chain one from there and that's our foundation and then we're going to draw another loop through both loops and that's a single crochet um, so that's one and now we're going to put our, ho our, our uh, hook through these two loops here and you're gonna see like a nice little V pattern starting and we're gonna do the same thing so you draw a loop through and then chain one through it and that's the foundation and then we're gonna make the single crochet so this is the top of the double crochet we have one foundation single crochet and a second foundation single crochet and we're gonna keep doing this until our handles as long as we want it so again, put the loop, put your hook through here. You want to make sure you're getting through two, two loops basically. You're going to have a nice little V inside a V formation going there. Draw one through, chain it, and then make your single crochet, and that's three. So again, we're going to split right in here. Draw one through, chain, and single crochet. Let's see, one, two, three, four. And I'm going to use some, some stitch markers as I go along so I know how many. I've just got to cut them real quick. I used up the ones I cut already because I don't want to lose track of my stitches here. Okay, now we're ready to go. So that was four.
nine. And now before I do the tenth one, I'm going to just wrap my marker around my hook. So the tenth stitch will have a marker going through it. So just so we can take a little look here, I've got this nice, even V coming out of a V, and then you can see the top, the top of the stitches running along here, and there are these nice little pretty single crochets for us. So that was 10, and we'll see how it looks to the rest of it. I think I'm going to do probably 40 all told. I don't want my handles too long, but I want to be able to at least get my wrist through, so we'll just keep going here. This is going to be a little tedious to watch, I imagine. So we're ready for another stitch marker. We're at 29. And 30. Actually, that's not that's not bad. Okay, we'll just go ahead and do 30. You can do more if you want. Um, but I think this will give us a long enough one. So let's see, we're going to join. Hmm. Joining into a double crochet. So we're going to start off like we usually do and insert the hook into this loop and draw one through. And now let's see, we said we were going to skip this one, so we're going to start in the next stitch here. Draw one up, and then I'm going to draw through two, and draw through two again. So that makes us a little double, double crochet there. And so that's our, that's our handle. And we did a double crochet, so we're going to chain two. just do the double crochets and chain two until we get to this next next marked space. one. And because the next space is marked, we're just going to do the double crochet here, and we're not going to chain two. I know old habits die hard, but do your best to not automatically chain two at this point. Okay, so now we're going to, again, find a little spot to insert our hook. So we get a nice V. And we're going to do another 30 foundation single crochets. And I'm going to steal my stitch markers. Okay, so apparently my camera decides that 18 minutes 
and 44 seconds is a long enough video and it cuts out. So here we are, I guess, at part three of the video. Um, I finished with the, fa the second set of foundation single crochets. Let's see, I hope I didn't get twisted. Oh no. Oh no, okay, we're good. You always want to make sure before you join that you're not twisted, otherwise you're going to get a twisted handle. I didn't check on the other side either. Okay, we're good over here. I should have mentioned that. Um, anyway, so we joined just like we did on the first handle into a double crochet, chain two, and we're just going to work the double crochets and chain twos across until we get back to the beginning here. just going to slip stitch into that chain 5 we started with. So we're going to try to anyway. Okay, there we go. Alright, now we're going to switch into doing single crochets. So in every chain 2 space I'm going to work 3 single crochets and then in every foundation single crochet I'm just going to work a single crochet. So to get started here I'm just going to chain 1 and then work my single crochets. Okay. So now we're up to the handle. That we did our foundation single crochets in. So this space right here is actually just the top of the double crochet. So we're going to go in right here because that's really our first single crochet there. And we're just going to work, work across that handle. We're back to the end already. So that was the last single crochet and this is just the top of the double crochet. So we're going to move into that chain two space and work three single crochets just like we were at the beginning. back to the handle again. So this was part of the double crochet. We're going to work right into here because that's where the first foundation single crochet actually is. And we're just going to work one single crochet in each one across. Okay, we're getting towards the end here. Just one more to go. And that was the last foundation single crochet, and then this is the the double crochet where we joined. So we'll just work three single crochets into the chain two space again. Okay, we're almost back to the beginning here. Alright, 
So to join, we're going to make sure we slip stitch not into the little um, chain one, but actually into the top of the first single crochet. So now we're joined, and we're going to do one last row, and we're just going to single crochet and every single crochet around. So to start, we're going to chain one, and then in the same space there, that first single crochet, we're going to single crochet, and then just go around. Okay, the video cut out again, but uh, this should be the last last segment here. I took a little break, fixed myself another cup of coffee, and we're ready to go again. Okay, so we've just been on our last round, working a single crochet into every single crochet stitch of the last round. And we're almost done gotten to the end of the second handle and we're in the home stretch now. Okay, so this is the last single crochet. And you have to be careful because this is not a single crochet, it was just the slip stitch from the last round where we joined, and then this was the chain stitch to get us started. So we need to slip stitch into the top of the single crochet, the first single crochet of the round. And that's it. You could go another round of single crochets if you wanted, um, but I'm going to stop here because I like to keep my produce bags as lightweight as possible. I think this is a strong enough handle, um, and another round is just going to add more weight without really contributing, contributing anything. Not a whole lot of weight, but, you know, every little bit counts. So I'm going to cut my thread, pull through, and I will weave that in later. But here we have our produce bag. It's got two handles. Um, definitely big enough handles. I might have even been able to go with smaller handles, but I think this is nice and it gives you the option to tie up the top of the bag so nothing falls out, which I think is good, a good option. So, and I just wanted to show you how sturdy and stretchy these things are because they do look a little on the small side, especially if you go um, remember I did the extra round of increasing, so if you do a bag that's a little smaller, um, it's still going to be able to hold a lot. So I'm just going to show you how much can fit. I've got five cans of soup and things that were just in our pantry for demonstration purposes. So that's three. And it's got three with no problem. And that's five. And I'm just lifting it up. It's totally off the ground. You can see how much it's stretched. And there's definitely, definitely room for more in there. So five cans of soup, no problem. You're going to be good to go with really any kind of fruit or vegetable you want to put in there. And then as promised, I mentioned that I did another bag in just about the same pattern here, and I just kept growing. 
So this I did with um, what it's sugar and cream, cotton, it's a worsted weight. I like working in cotton because it's a natural fiber and I don't have to worry about plastic microfibers polluting the oceans. Um, so this bag, if we can find the top, I just kept doing increasing rows. Um, I use the exact same pattern that I used for the produce bag. It's a little hard to see. Um, but any, okay, yeah, so here, here are my corners and I just kept going and going and going around and around, always increasing in every corner. And this corner. And then when I got the bag, I don't know, about 24 inches across, uh, I got the square to be about 24 inches across. Then I started doing gathering rounds along all the edges, as you can see here. And I just gathered in all four sides and then ran a foundation single crochet to skip over a whole corner. And then did a couple rounds of single crochets in every round. And that's how you end up with this nice, nice market bag. You can fit all kinds of stuff in there, because this one's just as stretchy as the produce bag. So I will probably post instructions for this soon, but I just wanted to give you a quick preview so you can see what else you can do using the same, same stitches and basically the same pattern. I think the only different stitch I used was single crochet two together, um, and that's, that's not a difficult stitch to master. So there we go. Um, hope you liked it. Enjoy using your produce bags, and hopefully I'll see you again soon. Thanks.